So I, I really love Zafrank. I've been watching him for years. I was really sad when he kind of like took a break from posting, but I'm glad that he's back in full force. I don't exactly know what his posting schedule is, but I'm always, I'm always uh, happy when he does release a new video though. Pleasantly surprised. All right. True facts, muscles that catch fish. This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. No, Here, true. a darter fish looks for a morsel of oh sh. Oh. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I didn't know clams ate fish. Like well, first off, trap. that right there is a mussel, and calling it a clam is offensive. And second of all, that's a lady mussel, and what she's doing is squirting baby juice all over that fish's face parts. And by baby juice, I mean juice that's made out of real babies. It's embarrassing, is what it is. <laughs> And now that Ethel saw it, it'll be the talk of Fishtown. Old Dale got a face full of baby juice. <gasps> well, I should explain. Let's back up a bit. Freshwater mussels in the order Unionida are found in rivers and streams around the world. Now, the thing about being a freshwater mussel is that you're essentially a rock with a pair of lips. And it can be challenging to, <laughs> to do anything. Oop, <laughs> we got a feisty one. So when it comes to making babies, they have to get creative. Now the male mussel's job is straightforward, literally. <laughs> he simply releases his sperm into the water, a task perfectly suitable for a creature so limited in its doingness. And there they are. That's some mussel sperm right there. The one in the top right looks like fun. Now sometimes <laughs> the sperm comes in balls. It's a tough grouping of words, <laughs> but they do. Look at this. It can look a bit chaotic in there. But eventually, they all group together on one side with their little tails hanging out and push in the same direction. Hmm. Come on, boys, we're going that way. <laughs> Why, what's that way? Who knows? We're in a river. Downstream, the females, which can look quite female, receive the sperm. I'm not sure how. I guess maybe there's a lot of it. And then they use it to fertilize their eggs. Yeah, water there is disgusting. There are quite a few eggs, way. but until they are appropriately shelled, and she raises them all in her cozy one-bedroom apartment. The little babies are quite muscleish. They have their mother's looks. However, they have a little bit of a toothy grin. Aww. And when you open them up, you can see there's more inside. Oh. Up close, it looks like a candy corn farm. But in some species, these hooks can be a bit frightening. Bands of muscle that stretch across the shell can contract and make the whole thing pinchy pinchy. Look, They're you so can cute. even see some of the sensory hairs that trigger that movement. And those threads there are also designed to help grab onto things. All of these bells and whistles are in preparation for what happens next. Now, our friend Dale happened to run into a mussel in the genus Epioblasma. They're the ones that might have the most straightforward approach. Fish like Dale often forage for food by turning over little stones and pebbles, and maybe occasionally a mussel or two after getting... Okay. I'm gonna be honest. I've never really looked up what the difference is between a mussel, an oyster, and a clam and like scallops and stuff. Do any of you guys know or do we need to watch another video after this? Because I'm curious. I I really don't know. <laughs> I know that a lot of them have like crazy different shapes, but that that seems too obvious of a of a thing to differentiate between them. I'm not sure. I, I know I like eating all of them, though. They're delicious. Hmm. Mussels are freshwater. Oysters are seawater, you think? We're gonna have to look it up. I, um... I used to have a saltwater tank that had a bunch of them built into, like, the live rock. It was really cool. And then I had a, a, a saltwater snail that I got, and he ate all of them. Just went around and completely decimated every single little shelled thing in that tank. I felt kind of bad, including like my, my feather dusters and whatnot. Turns out that snail was not a reef safe snail. Fantastic. It was very cute though, kind of looked like a cow. Rolled around like that, you can imagine they might want some payback. So Epioblasma evolved the ability to snapshot and <clears throat> hold on to the face of these fishes. Oh! <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> He's oh, like, that sucks. what the f and it's a tight squeeze too. Some species use little teeth Ooh. to hold on. And look, some evolve what look like little tasty fish eggs to draw the fish closer. I mean, it's not that impressive. You'll see. Now this isn't just some sort of fish face fetish. If you look closely, you can see the mummy muscle sort of pulsing. What she's doing is making herself into a sort of bellows. 
forcing water through the fish's mouth and out of its gills. And along with that water comes the babies. The chompy oh little God. babies of freshwater mussels are designed for this moment. As they pass through the fish's gills, they grab on. And not just a few of them, a whole bunch. The gill tissue responds by wrapping itself around the larva, sort of incorporating it into the fish's body. But for most mussels, this only works if it's the right species of fish. Grab onto the wrong gills and the tissue will eventually reject you. Like this one here, which is about to get pinched off. And it's not just the gills. The larva can attach to the fins as well. Anyway, now you can probably better appreciate what's happening to old Dale here. I mean, he really got the full package. Eventually, the mummy mussel lets go. And for some reason, <laughs> Dale decides to come back. <laughs> probably trying to drop off the hitchhikers right back where they came from. But they're not going anywhere. The tissue of the fish will now provide them with the safety and nourishment they need as they develop. Now, not every mussel wants to deep throat a fish face. And some fish, quite frankly, are just too big to fit. But there are ways to get a fish close enough. But before we get into that, let me tell you. You don't have to worry about muscle babies attaching themselves to your face parts. But when you're online, you're going to pick up some crackers so and cookies. So they're parasitic? Not melt either. Sneaky cookies. That is actually really that cool. Creepy, invisible man I had no idea. So if you're serious about privacy, like oh my god, here who removed his own face, you'll get yourself NordVPN. Takes your online activity and encrypts it, which makes it look like gibberish to the snoops. Then your activity is Have sent you never to a seen the Frank before Bridges? So you can't tell where Oh, you got a rabbit from. hole ahead of you. This has some benefits. His videos example, are great. Some internet service providers throttle your bandwidth if they can detect that you're streaming movies. If it's encrypted, they can't tell what you're doing, and they have to go throttle something else. I know what you're saying. What about the creepy invisible people at the cafe? Well, NordVPN has you covered because it's more than just a VPN. With threat protection, your downloads are scanned for malware, and huh. URLs containing digital threats are blocked before they can do their dirty work. Check it out at nordvpn.com slash zayfrank. You'll find an exclusive deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So it's Zay Frank. It's okay, I've been calling him Zay Frank. Birthday, you'll get a little something extra on top. And while you're at it, thank them for sponsoring this episode. Maybe pasta. Where were we? Oh, right. Some mussels in the genus Lampsilis have evolved a modification to their lips. I mean, technically their mantle, but I'm sticking with lips. This sh right here makes those fake fish eggs look like a kindergarten arts and crafts project. Look at that. They got the whole package, the looks, the movement. This muscle made its lips look like fish. You know, this reminds me of like frogs and moths that make themselves look like bird poop so things leave them alone. Or there's um there's like a caterpillar, I believe that makes itself look like a snake's head. It might be the butterfly form of it, but like what? Evolution is so weird. Evolution is so insanely weird. Like, this guy literally just made its lips look like fish and he flip-flops them around. It's like, or like anglerfish that have their little dangly light. Like, how the hell did that happen? That's horrifying and so cool. I bet it confuses the hell out of the fish they're trying to mimic. You think you found a good listener for your problems, turns out to be a f***ing mussel. But when the right fish approaches for a nibble, surprise! <laughs> baby can <confetti. laughs> If you slow it down, you can see the babies being forced through the gills of the fish. A bit of a fancier strategy with the same oh end God. result. <laughs> That's disgusting. Could you imagine? You're just, you're just thinking you're going in for a meal, and you just get like splooged right in the mouth. Hey, Akira. Oh my god, that is the most disgusting accident I've seen in a while. Like pranking? Yeah, that's that's a that's a funny prank. Yeah. All over you. Worst KFC ever, right? Yeah. And it's not just fishes either. Oh. Muscles have changed their lips to look like all sorts of crap. I mean, if you want something fancy, look at this one right here. Wait for it. <laughs> there it goes. It's a, shrimp. It's a little crayfish. <laughs> then you get to the end, you got to reset it. Zoop, ding. And look at this, they come in evening wear too. Medianitis Conbraticus, on the other hand, went for subtlety. I'm not totally sure what it's supposed to be, but I get it. I mean, I want to touch it. You got Legumi Erecta, which looks a bit like a pair of dentures that got lost in a shag carpet. It's pretty great, isn't it? But listen, you don't have to go through all this body modification to get your babies into a fish's mouth. 
It turns out you can serve them up directly. Some mussels package up their babies into little bundles called conglutinates. These little bundles are designed to look like things that fish might eat, and they're released directly into the water. There they go, and the fish ride after them. And look at this, the fish come right back. It's like a vending machine that you pay for with kisses. <laughs> A couple more, <laughs> come on. Mm, mm, mm. Yay! Some of these oh conglutinates are fairly straightforward, like these little ribbons released by Theloderma cylindrica. Up close, you can see that they're made of strands of unfertilized eggs with chompy larvae mixed in. Strophytus undulatus embeds its larva into little worms of mucus. Oh, cool. In some species, pigments are added in for additional effect. With a toolbox of eggs, mucus, and paint, it turns out you can make all sorts of things. Look at this one right here. The dark stuff is pigment. When this thing is released, it's designed to break apart into two different fakies. One half looks like a developing fish egg. The other half looks like the larva of an insect. Yeah. And it has a sticky side so it could attach oh. to rocks. These mussels in the genus Tychobranchus are particularly ambitious. I mean, this is some Da Vinci sh** right here. Those little whiskers there are just streaks of pigment in the mucus. And the whole thing looks quite a bit like the pupa of a black fly. Conglutinates like these little number two pencils oh, here aliens. are formed inside the mummy muscle in folds of tissue that act as molds. You can see a whole bunch right there, packed together like a belt of ammo. The level of detail can be quite incredible, certainly enough to fool a fish. Now they don't have to taste good to work. <laughs> you can see the fish is getting a little burpy. <laughs> and there you oh. go, you can see it leaking out the gills. I mean oh. the job's done before the fish gets a chance to spit it back out. Conglutinates are essentially little Trojan horse pinatas just oh, waiting to man. pop. In some cases, they're designed so the babies come out where the fake eyeballs are. Yoink, pop, huh. and it's over. And it just keeps going. Some species have a full-on fishing setup. Here, look, oh there's a mussel right there in the middle of the screen. And then that thing there, that's a lure attached to a mucus tether that the mussel sort of reels out. And come on, it totally looks like it's swimming, doesn't it? Here's a better look at it. Looks like he's sneezed what? out your pituitary. I mean, it is quite that a bit is of effort, amazing. isn't it? That is amazing. All this work to get your babies onto the gills of a fish. Why? It does Why just look fish? like a fish. Well, if they just release their babies into the current, then every generation would move further downstream. The fishes are like taxis that bring a certain percentage of the babies back upstream. Oh. There, they detach from the fish, mostly leaving it no worse for the wear. And the little babies can settle down and start the whole process all over again. Well, sort of, except for the whole extinction thing, which seems to be happening to them, which is a bummer. Oh, that Don't is a bummer. tell them, because they can't read, so they have no idea. Might be better not to know. Anyway, if you want to try and help get your feet wet, apparently in rivers full of mussel sperm, you can support the Freshwater Mollusk Conservation Society. Check them out at molluskconservation.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I didn't even know about any of that. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, my day just got better. All right, all right, all right. Let's see, hold on. Goo. What is the difference between... Okay. What is the difference between clams, mussels, and oysters? The most obvious is the taste. Clams and oysters have a fishy flavor, whereas a mussel is a more natural ocean taste without the lip-curling smack of fish. This makes the mussel ideal, but no, what is the difference be- no. Okay, mussels usually have a smooth black, blue, or brownish elongated shell, whereas clams have a rounded shell that's usually gray or beige and ridged. According to the organize- according to the organization Ocean Conserva- Conservancy, both mussels and clams are bivalval mollusks, which means they each have a hinged shell that separates into two parts. Yes, but what about oysters? Okay, so the difference between a mussel and a clam is their shell. Okay, good to know. Um, both clams and mussels can be in fresh water or salt water, but you'll find oysters only in salt or brackish water. Uh, let's see here. Clams, oysters, and mussels are all seafood staples, but how much do you know about the difference between these shelled critters? Today we're diving into what these shellfish have in common and what sets them apart. First things first, how are they similar? Clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops are all mollusks, meaning they're a member of the invertebrate phylum Mollusca. 
Their cousins within the phylum include gastropods like snails, slugs, and cephalopods like octopus and squid. Of all the mollusks, gastropods are the largest group with more than 60,000 known species. In second place uh, comes the bivalves, where we find clams, oysters, and mussels. The name bivalve comes from their two-part shells connected by a hinge in the back. There are more than 10,000 described species of bivalves found in freshwater and saltwater environments around the world, with 80% found in marine habitats. They pump water through their gills to breathe and eat. Uh, they're filter feeders, meaning they filter out small bits of food from the water around them. Clams can filter up to 24 gallons of water a day, and oysters can filter up to 50. Yeah, oysters are pretty big. Bivalves make their own shells of calcium carbonate, which gets larger as they grow. Unfortunately, they are also affected by ocean acidification, which is when carbon pollution is absorbed by the ocean and the ocean becomes more acidic. Acidification makes it harder for oysters, clams, and other animals to build their shells, including coral, by the way. Uh, because corals often, especially the, uh, the hard corals, they build their bodies out of calcium carbonate. Uh, it's clear they have plenty in common, but what sets them apart? Looks. Fortunately, these three shellfish are pretty easy to tell apart by looks alone. Clams have a stout oval-shaped shell uh, where both halves are the same size. Their shells tend to be a light tan brown or white color, but the inside or the mantle can be very colorful. Look up the Maxima clam you will, to see for yourself. Mussels have a darker blue or black shell and are more oblong in shape, and they can have an iridescent sheen to them. Oyster shells have a rougher texture than mussel shells and can be brown, white, or gray. Oyster shells are a little more irregular in shape too, especially when compared to clams or mussels. Since bivalves uh, rely on filter feeding, you'll find all three of these critters in aquatic habitats. Species of bivalves are found all over the world, from the shallows to the deeps and the tropics to the arctic. Both clams and mussels can be found in fresh and salt water, but you'll find oysters only in salt or brackish habitats. Clams have a foot that help them to burrow into the soft sediment, and you'll most likely find them hiding in the mud or sand. One of the more well-known clams is the Coquina clam. These tiny clams live in sandy beaches around the world and will quickly burrow into the sand after each wave, or kids' sand shovel disturbs them. Oysters and mussels tend to stay put more than clams. Mussels secrete thin fibers called uh, bisul threads that allow them to stick to rock or other mussels. Huh. So oysters stay in one place as adults and are often found attached to other oysters in big oyster reefs. Oh, they, that's neat. They, uh, it's kind of like barnacles then. Barna they had a really hard time defining barnacles. I watched a video about it, uh, it was just pretty interesting. All three species are beloved by seafood eaters around the world and are an important part of the environment and the economy. NOAA over there, estimates the economic value of commercially harvested bivalve mollusks is about $1 billion annually in the United States, including wild-caught and farmed mollusks. In 2012, the total U.S. oyster harvest was worth $155 million, with 3,200 oyster growers in the Pacific Northwest alone. And that doesn't even include the jobs and income associated with wholesale processing and retail, which greatly multiply the total impact of American fishing and shellfishing or shellfish farming. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. 